Good morning, and uh, welcome to my living room. I am in my living room, and I am in my pajamas on this Sunday morning uh, because it's a snow day. It is, well, not quite snow. It's sleet and freezing rain, and so we are not having our typical worship services this morning, but I do want to bring to you some, some thoughts on Sabbath, on Sabbath and, and what exactly it means to keep Sabbath. Yeah, it's a word that we kind of toss around a lot, and typically we just mean Sunday mornings, and we go to church on Sunday mornings, and so it's a little bit odd on a day that we can't get to church, or maybe we're out of town. Does that count as a Sabbath, or, or, or what? what is our understanding of it? Uh, obviously, Sabbath takes its roots all the way back at the beginning of creation, when God created for six days, and then on the seventh day, God rested. That's the beginning of Sabbath keeping. But in the Old Testament, as the Israelites were led out of Egypt, they were told, the fourth commandment, to keep Sabbath. And really, if you, if you get into um, those, those actual phrasing that was used, what they're told is to guard Sabbath and to make it a holy or make it hallowed. Um, but an interesting thing in, in Exodus they're given the Ten Commandments. And then again, in Deuteronomy, the Ten Commandments are rehashed. And that one commandment, the, the fourth one, about keeping Sabbath, the reasoning behind it is actually a little bit different. And Deuteronomy, they're told, you will keep Sabbath, you will not work, you will not make others work, because in Egypt you were slaves, and now you're not. And therein lies a very important part of understanding of Sabbath. As slaves in Egypt, the Israelites' worth was dependent on what they could do, what they could accomplish. And so if they weren't accomplishing anything, if they weren't working, then they weren't worth anything. But here God's saying, I have brought you out because I love you. And your value is not in what you can accomplish. It's in the fact that I love you. Therefore, you're not going to work all the time. You're going to take time to be with me because I love you. And therein is the value of you. Six days you shall work, but one day a week, one seventh of your life shall be spent not working. You know, in today's society, that's a revolutionary idea. Our economy is 24-7, 365. It's nonstop. There is not a day, there is not an hour of the day that I cannot either work or buy. And now, even on snow days, because we have technology like this, I can still work. I can still lead worship. Um, but my worth does not depend on my ability to produce. My worth does not, pretend, does not depend on my ability to, to work, to, to show up at work. Now, yes, there are people that need to be out on days like this, our emergency responders and essential personnel. Yeah, it's a situation of the, the ox is in the ditch, right? But snow days like this, or days when hurricanes come through, days where there's some sort of an uh, act of God, as the insurance companies might call it, is a good reminder that God wants us to stop. And sometimes if we refuse to stop, God makes us stop. And so I want to encourage you to not do a whole lot today. You know, clean up your house, whatever, but don't feel like you are missing out because you can't get to church or you can't get to work. And please don't spend the day online shopping. Um, that completely defeats the purpose. But just take time. Take this day. Make it a holy day. Guard this time of rest and make it holy because God loves you. And your worth does not depend on what you can do in this world. Your worth is found in the love that God has for you as is demonstrated in the death of Jesus Christ. That's how much he loves you, that he gave his son. So rest. Pause. Enjoy the stillness and the silence of a cold, wet, icy day. Let's pray. Father, meet us here in the stillness and quiet. Meet us here where you have made the world stop moving around us. Bring to our minds the great love that you have for us and the healing that is in rest and quiet.
and time spent with you. Help us to enjoy this creation that you have made, not rush through it, feeling like we have to do more and more and more. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Peace be unto you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit.